This is a very large pineapple that I've had to ram in sideways because, quite frankly, it doesn't kind of fit vertically. It's the only way I could fit it in was to put it in horizontally. So I'm starting the video with this lit so you can see what it looks like. It's based on the linear LED strip, I could call it neon, uh, since it is in that style, but that will upset the neon aficionados. But it is nonetheless an LED emulation of neon. And this particular one is very good, and I'll show you why. Watch your eyes. The light is about to come back. This is going to be a bit of a, a bright burst of light. Here we go. Okay. So this thing runs on 5 volts. It runs on a USB power supply. And the power consumption is typically about 800 milliamps for this. It's based on the sort of 3 volty type LED strip. I don't know if it's got resistors in it, but we'll find that out. I'll open it up and take a look in the end of it. But it's very interesting construction because in previous ones I've looked at, they had vac formed a plastic sheet and then they basically sat this into the plastic sheet. This is very different. Is this going to show? Uh, aside from the fact it's quite brittle, it's smashed at the end there during shipping. Uh, it's a solid sort of, what, is it cast acrylic might be a description. This is a polystyrene, hard polystyrene. It's got that look. But it's got a channel in it. Uh, let me see if I can just lift this out. Oh, it's glued in. It's got a channel. And the channel has holes. Uh, presumably, yes, they are cast in. That's clever. So that they can actually terminate onto the little bus bar connections or onto the tape in here. And then they can actually press it into the outline. And where they jump, they've got the supply came on it, soldered onto the end of that piece, and then it, they've got the wires tapped onto the end of this bit. Oh, they've actually slit it. That is interesting. We'll take a look at that as well. And uh, then they've added an excess here, and they've basically just uh, stuffed it underneath. So the excess is stuffed on underneath so they can keep this thin, clear wire quite taut. And it basically goes through this bit, through this bit, round the base here, and then round the green bit. Notable that they actually used uh, warm white here instead of orange. I think I'd rather they used orange, but maybe the yellow is just a, a bit of a dimmer colour. Let us unplug this and explore this. I could explore it by taking a look at that bit that I was looking at there. Let's see if I can actually break it. So this is glued. This is where I do break it. So I've got a bit of slack here. Has this been slit in the same way? Yes, it has. This is how they've done it. To make it easier to terminate, it, they, it's a resistor per LED. Right, okay, tell you what, I'm going to lift this bit up so we can see this. And then I'll zoom right down. So one moment, please. Very interesting construction. They've literally just slit under here. And then they've sorted the wires onto one of the intermediate uh, cutting points in here for extra strength. That means the cables aren't stressed at the very, very end and just going onto the wee sort of half pads. It means it's a very efficient way of using this. What is the value of the resistor they've used there? You guys can probably see that. I can't. It is 220 ohm. Oh, look at how manky my magnifying glass is. My apologies for that. Is it 200? No, it's what? Yes, it is 220 ohm. 221. Two two and one zero. Although now I'm looking at that, it doesn't look like that, does it? It looks like one two two. No, it is two two one. For some reason it was kind of like a bit weird. But that's a very interesting way of doing it. I guess that's just evolution of the technique for strength. And that means the cables are pretty much coming straight off underneath and going down through that hole. Okay, let's zoom back out and you can see that uh, it's on the trumpy brick has been pressed into action again. And all they've then done is squish that wire up under there, lay it in here. I'm going to go, have to go back down onto the, the table here. Uh, I shall focus down on there and go back down here. Let's see if we can squish it back in and see if I'm, I'm employable at the factory or if I'd be sacked. So something you could do with this stuff, if it failed, you could get some of the, the low-voltage LED tape, although it's kind of specialist, the low-voltage stuff. You find it a lot in products, but it's not so readily available. Um, or more likely... Oh, this is quite tight. This is quite tight. I'm regretting this. Uh, you could replace it with the 12-volt stuff, which I'd kind of prefer, really. Uh, this is not going in very easily. I'm making a fool of myself. I've already been sacked from the Chinese factory that makes it for this. For my lack of speed. Oh, that must be so fatiguing on their fingers. Uh, laying this stuff in all the time, particularly when you're having, having to lay it in to the glue. But I suppose they get used to it. They probably heat it up beforehand. 
Oh, that is quite tricky. That is tricky indeed. Right, let me shuff that down. Let's plug it in and see if it immediately shorts out. No, the, the pineapple is lit. Okay, righty-o. So that's, uh, I'll just leave it lit, it's quite nice. So that's their construction technique, and it is resistor per LED, which is very nice. That's going to really spread the current. We can work that out. I'm not sure what voltage it will be by the time it gets to the end, but I do have a meter. So we could find out. Let's ram this into there. I'm not sure what the polarity is. Bring the meter in so you can actually see it. Touch it in there by the time it gets to the end. Has it dropped? I'm not making connection, am I? No, I'm not making connection here because uh, it's got a little bus bar system, but it's kind of recessed in. No, I'm not making connection to that at all. Let me probe onto the end of the LED tape itself. Am I going to get something here? Oh, I'm, I'm not having fun at all, am I? I may have to pause momentarily while I do this. This is why I shouldn't make impulse decisions. Hold on, I'm just going to unplug this. I'm going to strip it back just a little bit with a with a kniff. Where is a kniff? There's a there is a kniff. Let's uh, make a little incision down here and fold this out like they do in their own factory. Let's see if I can slip my finger in the process. Oh right, okay. Right, I can see where I can get a connection. Righty ho. Power back up. Ram my probes down into that area. See if I can not short it out in the process. And, oh, this is tricky. This is tricky. I'm kind of regretting making this decision here. It's not easy. So there's one connection. There's the other connection. By the time it gets to the end, it's actually dropped quite a lot, hasn't it? Hold on, I'm trying to get my connection here. Oh, it's dropped to about four volts at the end. So that green LED, by the time it gets to the end, some of the current will be dropped across this cable, the rest will be dropped along the sort of bus bar system. So let's say four volts, and the voltage of that LED running at that low current will be 2.4, so that's four volts minus about, say, say 2.5 for this the green LED, equals 1.5 divided by... Uh, was that 220 ohm? By the time it gets to the end, it's only about 7 milliamps. That's not bad, though. It doesn't look too bad for that. Uh, that's 7 milliamps per LED. But uh, overall, the whole thing is about 800 milliamps. So I'd guess it's going to be starting off a lot brighter at the first sections and gradually getting dimmer as it goes around. That's maybe visible, actually. It is visible. But uh, the overall visual effect is very nice. It's a nice construction. You could use the 12 volt stuff. The downside to that is you can only cut the 12 volt stuff on every inch. So you might have to cheat it in and out the corners here and maybe adjust it to try and just barely squeeze it in or at least have uh, even gaps at the side. It might take a bit of experimentation. But that 12 volt would be a more even illumination and it's more readily available. So this is fairly thick. It's about four millimeters thick, this plastic. That's uh, just over eighth of an inch. Um, and it's got the two... Uh, hanging eye holes here for that, actually just putting it in screws in the wall. It's very good construction. For the money, it's a lot better than I was expecting. This cost uh, from eBay, it cost um, £20.58 for what is basically a very robust sign. And some of the, the banana and the rose one, there's the banana there, I don't know if you'll see that, but the rose there, I thought they were really visually very good. It's actually been styled quite well. It's not like they've tried to cheat it by saying we'll use one bit and zigzag backwards and forwards here and then black out bits. It's they've actually split it into all these different sections. So there is quite a lot of work involved in making it. I would say this is actually pretty damn good. I like this. It's very neat. 